After the sad loss of Queen Elizabeth II, who served this great kingdom so selflessly for 70 years, appointing her 15th and final Prime Minister just days before her passing, the nation came to halt for a full 10 days of mourning, capped off by a funeral so majestic only the British could pull it off. 10 days of focused remembrance and gratitude for 70 years of smiling, listening and selling Britain to the world. It was a momentous event, and now, as with the loss of any loved one still fresh and our emotions still high, we must slowly get back to the business of ordinary, dreary, daily life. Because life does indeed go on. It has to. Seasons come and go regardless. Progress depends upon it. We cannot become consumed in pain. As C.S. Lewis wrote, thought is never static, pain often is. And so new ideas and new shoots of thought must push us forward and away from the stasis of pain. Which brings me on to Black History Month. Whilst our longest-serving monarch only got 10 days, in classrooms across the country from this morning, our children will be subjected to a constant month-long barrage of guilt and recrimination over the evils meted out upon our black brothers and sisters, systemically oppressed over many years, and don't you ever forget it, despite the huge and tangible progress we've all made in our collective drive for genuine equality. Teachers without specialism in the field of so-called black history or too lazy to educate themselves on the topic will click open Google, type in the search terms and be flooded with a whole load of sponsored resources to better their white privileged students' brains. Mostly divisive, exclusionary and not at all diverse. Surprise, surprise. All focusing the crosshairs of our children's thoughts on the stasis of present guilt and the stasis of past pain. And that's just one month. Don't get me started on the fully quarter of a year devoted solely to the LGBTQ plus plus question mark exclamation mark forward slash full stop crew. Naturally, I have no issue with the teaching of history, even the teaching of black history per se. Kids should learn the broadest range of historical topics as part of a balanced and well-rounded curriculum. But another year of poems about George Floyd, really? More kneeling coppers, more pictures of progressives like Justin Trudeau in black in his blackface phase? All with scant mention of William Wilberforce, leader of the movement to abolish the slave trade, and the 1,500 British sailors who gave their lives to end slavery 30 years and more before our friends across the pond got the message. Is it really necessary? Can we not just teach history history? Well, how about this for an idea? If we are to proceed down this painful intersectional identitarian path where the only value we see in each other is in the colour of someone's skin or who they happen to wish to share their bed with. How about we make September British History Month in honour of Her Late Majesty? How wonderful would it be to see the most holy flag of pride a place for just one little month and witness our streets instead of wash with a sea of red, white and blue, where Brits of all shapes and sizes, colours and hues can come together and celebrate the great things that our forebears achieved rather than stand on their silent graves and snipe at how imperfect they were, granting them no right to reply. You know what? I wouldn't want that either. Because I don't believe months should be the property of whichever noisy lobby lobby group is the Duriger this week. I have no interest in LGBTQ History Month, Pride Month, Black History Month, Trans Awareness Month, or even Gay Uncle Day. But I do kind of like Gay Uncle Day. And neither to the overwhelming, neither did the overwhelming majority of my gay and black friends. There is only one future worth fighting for, and that is a shared one. In a society fractured down such deepening lines of intersective grievance, it is the things we have in common which will draw us, all of us, closer together into new and more optimistic times and thinking, rather than to focus entire months to the commemoration of the stasis of pain. Thought is never static. Pain often is.